next presenter is uh, Dr. Tom Horan, who is the Associate Professor in the School of Information Systems and Technology at uh, CGU, Fairmont. Um, he's one of our local faculty. He's also Director of the K Center for eHealth Research. He has uh, 25 years of experience in research on eHealth and has written over 25 technical articles on this topic. He's going to talk to us today about action design research and health IT. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, all the world is a small town, so small that I once leased her house on the back. And, uh, and here she is later, years later. Uh, and did I get my deposit back? <laughs> uh, and Andy, thank you for the invite. Uh, it's great to be here. Certainly, the school's done a lot to bring this uh, public health to Claremont in a, in a lot of ways. And so I, uh, it's uh, an honor to be here, and particularly to speak after Dr. Molina, uh, whose organization has really led the, the country in, uh, in health services uh, for traditionally underserved uh, populations. And coincidentally, uh, we've been trying to develop a tool uh, in that space. And so I want to talk to you about uh, this health ATM and our experience with doing it. Uh, I want to just say a little bit about the case center, what it is, a little bit about PHRs, personal health records, if you're not familiar with that acronym, uh, talk about action design research, which is what this is about, <coughs> field testing that are currently underway, and then the commercialization activities that, that uh, kind of come out of this. So the case center, we got our mission statement, we salute it every morning, and uh, uh, you know, it's to do uh, scientific endeavors, uh, both on the health and disability side. And I won't read the whole thing, uh, but you can get the gist. Uh, the three areas that we operate in are conducting research, uh, doing educational and training activities, and uh, outreach and impact. In the research area, uh, that what we have focused on is uh, personal health records in underserved populations. We've also looked at innovative systems for those who have disabilities and helping to manage their disabilities. And finally, we've been doing some work in the emergency response area of multimedia, kind of uh, multimedia, particularly visual information in, in emergency response. Uh, in the education, we do graduate courses in consumer health informatics, public health informatics, something that we've been talking with the school about collaborating on, and we have a master's degree in health information management. And at an out, outreach and impact, we've been doing a lot in what's called cyber infrastructure for public health and health services, really bringing the power of cloud computing into the application space uh, 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 with, and doing that with the National Science Foundation and the National Institute of Health. Uh, I uh, used to live and work in Washington, D.C. for seven years, so I'm a bit of a policy wonk. I'm a policy wonk in rehabilitation, uh, and so, uh, but I still do serve on committees and things like that, including having served on the American Health Information Community, which was the Secretary of HHS's community uh, uh, group on empowerment. So that's just a little bit about us. Cutting to the focus of this, and Dr. Molina covered this, but I want to kind of just come back to it, uh, even though this is changing every day. Uh, uh, healthcare reform is now addressing uh, some of the 47 million uninsured, and really close to 66 to 100 million underserved, which I think was also alluded to in his comments about access. Uh, uh, and so, uh, it, you know, we get pushback sometimes. Uh, when we present in like Arizona, uh, uh, that you know most are U.S. residents, and, uh, and 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 due to the recent growth of the economy, of course, there's even more underinsured and uninsured in the unemployment ranks. Uh, less than 10 percent of those of adults who are uninsured in California uh, qualify for public health insurance, so they're just out of luck. And the largest uh, share are of Latino ethnicity. Within this uh, cohort, as you know, there's low use of preventive measures. Low low utilization of regular checkups and all that kind of stuff. Uh, when I taught the course on public health informatics last, I used George Howerson's book, I uh, get a new one out, but it's called Health Reform Now. And in it, you know, it's really a pretty good book because it, you know, it says, you know, you know, there's five, these five chronic diseases that you know account for a disproportionate share of, um, of the dollars. And, and, that, and that doing something about it is really block and tackle stuff. It's not rocket science, you know. Take your medication, walk half hour a day, make your appointment, you know, all, you know those kinds of things for diabetes, like we mentioned. Uh, and, so, uh, and so I'll get more to that in a second. Uh, but as, as many of you also know, 
exactly those chronic diseases have a disproportionate prevalence in under, underserved populations. And so, you know, this is where you talk about bending the cost curve, where you have uh, individuals who traditionally have not had insurance, not seeing regular checkups, uh, not getting uh, treatment for preventable uh, 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 conditions that escalate over time become worse. Uh, so, how can da da da? How can can health IT you know kind of fly in like Superman and make this all better? Well, that's what we think in our school. No, I'm kidding. Uh, 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 but that the health IT discussion has talked about fostering adoption, active engagement by consumers is really I mean right the patient getting the patient focused, engaged, committed is it. Thing. And so how can health IT do that, particularly in this area that I'm talking about? So we started to think, well, you know, in the health IT space, personal health records is where some of this discussion has occurred. So for those who don't know, that's, you know, you can get your own record, you know, on the internet. And, uh, and there, there's the untethered version that's called Google, uh, Google, Microsoft, Health Ball, tethered versions that are linked to healthcare plans such as Kaiser system, which some of you may have, the VA, Veterans Administration has a big one, and others. Well, most of the, the research on PHRs has focused on fairly affluent, you know, you know, subscribers, health insurance, things like that. So there's kind of a gap in trying to think about how to take health IT and connect it to this need that we see. And so that's what we've been trying to do. Uh, and we know that successful P, uh, adoption of PHR hinges on the ability to engage patients, provide communication pathways, allow for personalization, and create a transparent system where there is a notion of trust about what's happening. There is, however, little data on health systems performance, right, for the millions of uninsured Americans, and how the PHR can, use, can be used for this. Now, I should mention, we've been focusing on how to help the individual, but it has broader population and public health uses for, for adherence analysis and things like that that often they don't know what happens to the patient once they leave the door. Well, you add that all up times, you know, two million, and you get a, you get a sense of what's happening out there. So we started off this research to look at how personal health records could assist underserved populations. We wanted to figure out the, the landscape, and then we wanted to actually design something. The third objective that came out of this was actually to commercialize what we came up with. Uh, in the spirit of time, you can read fast. I'm going to cut to the bottom lines of these things. If you want a copy of them, you know. We got funding from Blue Shield Foundation to do interviews, focus groups, uh, do some field studies. We end up to the MEDIA program, which is a migrant farm worker area of, of, uh, of Northern California, the Community Salute program, which is you know, County USC Hospital, and try to think about you know, what can we do in this space. One of the things we came up with is you keep, there's no simple solution. And, and you need to have, this is working my way through Rose, we've published on this, you need to have supporting policy that facilitates use of personal health records within community health centers. That's a big issue. Not covered even in health care reform, not covered in the High Tech Act of the stimulus bill. Comes close, but doesn't kind of spot on do it. The organizations that we're working with, particularly community health centers, are now wrapping up, ramping up for health care reform. So they got a lot on their plate. How's their health IT systems kind of growing? Do they have time to even go straight to the patient versus you know, just get their system running. Then when you move to the technical infrastructure, what is the right technical infrastructure? You can't place too much uh, burden on the community health centers, on the community system. You have to, in order to move to a much more of a web services cloud environment in order to make it light and nimble and things like that. And then, you know, most importantly, and I sometimes do this chart from the bottom up, but uh, it sometimes gets confusing, uh, is the person, right? And issues of privacy and confidentiality language, literacy, right? Uh, health management attitudes and awareness. So it's a tall order uh, to do it, but it is a disruptive technology and we think it can be done. So when we started to turn our attention to how can it really be done, we went to these settings, we went to the uh, Camino de Salud Network program at County USC Hospital, where when somebody shows up in the emergency room for the fifth time, they get sent <coughs> to a care coordinator and basically the care coordinator says, uh, you know, there's going to be a better way than this. We enroll in our program, and, and we will help coordinate the care. The person there says, that sounds great. What do I need to do? You need to go to the community clinic. You need to do this. They say yes, but then they walk out the door. How do they know? How do you know that they do it? Our focus group findings with caregivers similarly communicated that, 
that they, they have these communications, but there's inconsistent follow-up. The concept of personal health records just was not on the radar screen of somebody in the era at this time, you know, speaking Spanish. And so, or English, or Vietnamese. Uh, and so there needed to be a better way, right? And so what we came up with, we scratched our heads, and we really sat on some Thursday afternoon, and it's going to be as simple as, 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 as using an ATM machine. And I would only add to the earlier speaker, there's three things people know all over the world. <laughs> you know, it's a cell phone, a $100 bill, and an ATM machine. Everybody knows that. <laughs> you know, you don't say I'm going down to the worldwide financial network to engage in blah, 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 blah. You say, I'm going to get money, and or give money. And so, and so we wanted it that simple. So our goal was to create a, like a bank, a simple, easy to use personal health care system for managing day-to-day -day affairs, which included a kiosk that could go in community clinics and things like that, but we're much more of a web service, you know, cloud-based web service that can be rendered on kiosks. We currently ride on the Google Health platform, although we can ride on others. You can, it can be accessed through the you know, internet, mobile phone, laptop, and kiosks. Uh, we're trying to address all the problems I talked about since I'm already getting the high five on a lot of things. Uh, that's why I'm blowing through this. Uh, every problem in healthcare we address with our health APM machine. That's what it is. <laughs> Leave it there. Uh, uh, and so right now what we're doing is pilot testing uh, this, this uh, health ATM service in community clinics in Los Angeles and Kern County. And we're assessing care plan adherence, health activation, health, how usable is the system, uh, and, health, and health services utilization. We also did a, a practicum, thank you, Greg Dewey, wherever Greg is still here, uh, at Keck uh, last spring on uh, a business model, and that business model has subsequently rolled out into the commercialization of it. So what is Health ATM, you ask, with me with two minutes left? Could you just flash me the five one again? So I just back up. Can I, can I buy somebody time for later? Uh, uh, okay, so, so we focus on three areas. My health, my activities, my rewards. So as simple as one, two, three. My health are your personal health records. My activities is care plan adherence, as well as goals and communication. My rewards is we've created a reward system, kind of get paid today to do the right thing for tomorrow. You heard some screenshots. If you had enrolled in Health ATM, this is what you'll see. If it's on a kiosk, it's a push button. If it's on the internet, you know, click, click, click. My health, my activities, my rewards. If you click down to my health, you'll see your conditions, medications, allergies, procedures, lab, lab results, immunizations. So long as there's a handshake with Google Health or a handshake with us, it's auto-populated, right? If it's not, we have kind of a back office way to get what we need in there. Uh, this is just the version of it in Spanish. We have both English and Spanish. And my activities, what we have is your, your profile, your care plan, and your goals. Under my activities, within your care plan, it's customized, typically up to three goals. You know, simple things. Make, make your appointment, take your, whatever, right? We also have educational modules that are video modules that can be customized for the individual who's doing it. And this is what, it, and then we have a back office version where the care manager can get in there and, and lay out the goals, track the goals, track how well the patient or groups of patients are doing with those goals. We have my rewards, which is, you know, it's a funny, we're in a coupon world, you know, and so uh, it's 2,000 points that you can get, 500 for joining, another 1,000 or so for, for doing the right thing, and 1,000 that can be validated by the care manager. Uh, right now, you know, somebody signs up, they get a $10 gift certificate for Albertsons, you know, and they... They do activities, they come back, the care manager validates it, they get another $10 coupon for hours into 90 cents, or whatever the care plan manager says is appropriate. And so that's kind of how that, how that works. What we're trying to do, as I said, is investigate how it's used, how patients feel about it. And I have to tell you, the data, you know, we're getting data every day. The data we're getting back right now is we can, if we can work our way through the work systems of the, of the community clinics, which is, you know, no small order, Patients love it, 80% like it, like seeing their goals, want to use it regularly, that kind of stuff. It activates, and that's what we're trying to do. We want to look how it assists in care management, patient self-management. We want to explore how health you know, can be best used in community center and, and health center contexts. You know, and I'll give some, some of the examples. And we want to consider follow-up and sustainability options, uh, options. We think patients benefits, payers benefit, policymakers benefit, and providers benefit. By people doing the right thing, managing their care better, you know, adhering to the care plan, doing the block and tackle stuff that George Halberstam said that can, can uh, make for better health. We expect to see these gains uh, in, in health and in the diverse and underserved patients that we focused on. 
We expect to see more empowerment in terms of remembering what the key goals are, what they have to do, to be rewarded for it, to share it with their spouse or a loved one in terms of what their plans are. Improve coordination between the primary care and hospital. You know, let's say we don't know what happens when they leave the, when they leave the room. We have the data on what happens when they leave the room. And we see this as increased opportunities for financial sustainability to have an innovative solution uh, in safety net setting. Our current game plan on the commercialization side is we've, uh, we've uh, filed a, a not, not only a, a preliminary patent, but actually a, a non-provisional patent, a full patent in it. We received funding from a pilot testing. We formed a company, Health ADM Incorporated. Uh, and, you know, and all that that means, we have follow-on patents underway. We're developing marketing materials. And we're pursuing first customers and support. So you know, lot, to do, lot done, lot to do. And uh, we're going to try and connect, in conclusion, with the meaningful use activities of, of, uh, of the healthcare, uh, of the High Tech Act for patient activation. We want to address healthcare reform about how to create tools for the 34 million people that are going to kind of, you know, now want more. And we're trying to do that in small steps with our health ATM. I've got a team, got a lot of sponsors, and I'm done at zero. Thank you. <laughs>